All right, we are going to continue. Uh, where are we? Julia among the stars, and we know that Julia is the robot person or the robot lady. Well, I guess are, do robots have like do they have sexes? Like, is it a lady robot and a man robot? I'm not sure how it goes. But anyways, we're back. Julia's the computer. Okay, Wardfire, that's what we'll say. Computer. She looks like a robot. So we had a dead body over here, and we got a sample, and that's good. We were frozen for 60 years by Julia. The door is locked. The door is locked. So I'm not sure which one will work. We'll try Andrew Lark. Yeah, so she's like, um... What was the lady from the Halo series? Katana? Was that her name? Cortana. Cortana, I think, was what it was, right? She had a female figure, but she was just a computer AI. Ooh, I can open this door now. Whoa, where are we? Broken display. Someone ripped the display from the wall. But why? Question. Was the entertainment program that bad? <laughs> I don't know if the entertainment program was bad. Apology. I am unable to find anything interesting about this bed. It's a bed. Someone threw the empty pack of nutrients on the ground. Observation. It seems that at a certain point, the crew stopped caring about their living conditions. Okay, that's crazy. Analysis. The shoe size matches the corpse on the bed. There's a corpse on the bed? I didn't even see it. This is terrible. The corpse is a human male. I would estimate his age to be approximately 34 years. Observation. He has been shot in the head while sleeping. Damn! Commentary. This must have been done by either a mentally unstable or desperate person. <laughs> what? Oh snap, what happened? He was shot in the head? Like he was shot like while he was sleeping or something. Just an empty storage crate. Well, that's boring. How about junk? Let's examine junk. Yeah, oh, I am MG. unable to distinguish anything usable among this clutter. Red rum. Red rum. Red rum. <laughs> Has anyone seen the uh, Shining movie? <laughs> I watched that recently on uh, Netflix, and I was, like, freaked out. The little kid that goes, red rum. Red rum. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, it's a Stephen King novel. That's right. Uh, Stanley Kubrick? Is that his name? He did the actual movie. Okay, so there's uh, a bunch of lock stuff the here. The locker has been forced open. Anyways, I cannot find anything important inside. Uh, data pad. Oh, look at this. We got a whole bunch of text. Wardfire, your turn to read. Oh, wait, she's not here. Yeah, he directed it. Yeah, that's right. He also did the uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, from what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Too long, didn't read. <laughs> you know, if it was only one, I might do it. Oh, but look, there's a locker code. I should probably write this down. A locker code. I wonder if that's the code for everything, every locker. Nine, seven, eight. One, two, five. It's just like when I play Nancy Drew. Sometimes you gotta write stuff down, you know? So yeah, there's definitely a lot of interesting text going on here. Huh. So look at the year, 2033. No, 2133. Lark has gone crazy. He has a theory that something is here with us. He set up a station watch and assigned Scott to the first shift. Okay, so something has seriously gone terribly wrong here. This is bad, 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 bad. Pavel. So I wonder if, do I have this, will this work now? Let's try it. Nine, seven, eight, one, two, five. Confirm. Excellent. Examine it. Another opened empty locker. I would suggest examining the ones that are still closed. Okay, but I thought I did. 
Look, he hid his ID card in there. You have very good eyes, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel's got good eyesight. So it's the same key passcode, right? I think. Oops, no. Oh, that's access denied. Nine, seven, eight, one, two, five. Nope. Okay, that locker doesn't work. So that's no good. This locker has been pried open and is useless. Oh no. It's pried open and it's useless. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got a data pad down here. It's locked. Oh jeez. We need to find the passcode. And we need to insert nano SD memory card. Oh boy. Hmm. So let's see what else we have in here. Looks like we have ventilation up there. Ooh, how do I get in there? The ventilation system once provided fresh air to the whole station. <laughs> Let's see. Do not cover. I don't think we can really do anything. The though. ventilation Yeah, yeah, I heard you the first time. Let's do another quick peek here. The bed. Apology. Nothing interesting about the bed. Commentary. A male body. Oh yeah, we know that. Yeah, we're going to need to find the password for that data pad. Okay, so what else is in here? Sleeping quarters, woman! We gotta go that way. This closed door leads to the women's dormitory. Uh, let's see. The ID card lock is broken and can't be fixed. Judging by the burn marks, it has been repeatedly shot with a laser gun. A laser gun? I like lasers. Observation. The storage space opening mechanism is malfunctioning. There's no way to open it. Well, that's no good. So we're in the male dormitory and we can't get into the woman dormitory. Oh, there's a box over here. There is nothing. Nothing interesting in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Computer terminal. Available IDs. Who should we log in as? Mr. Gibstash, maybe? <laughs> you think it's in that text I didn't read? I will see, we'll see. Messages. Now we're hacking their emails. Okay, let's see. Oh look, we've got a little instant message going on here. Lots of instant messaging, folks. Who's Cynthia? We haven't found her ID card yet. Media. Ooh, sample number three two two one three three. Hmm, interesting. Log out. Let's do Andrew Lark. He's only got two messages. Okay. I could have role played those chats. That would take me forever, and I would need a partner in crime. Who wants to be my Cynthia? You want me to read this? Are you crazy? I want to look at the pictures, the pretty pictures. That's kind of bizarre that they would just have like a lamp kind of thing going on there. And whatever that is. All right. Oh, you said Ward Gibbs. Okay. I missed that. Of course I did. Looks like a rock. Remember that we're the last surviving members of this expedition. There's no excuse for mistakes. Any form of rules, violation will be strictly punished. In other words, don't screw up, or you'll have to deal with me. Okay. Are you online? I've got some big news. What's up? Lark plans to blame it all on Cynthia. What is he thinking? No clue. Aren't you worried he can read our communication? At this point, I don't care. I'm still stuck in the lab. Any progress? Nope. It looks like a poison, but it really could be anything. Sorry. Have to go now before we get charged with abusing communication again. Pavel. I'm not sure what will happen. I have some of my notes in my data pad. My password is Xander756. In case anything happens to me, 
try to make good use of it. <laughs> there you go. I got a password. Ha! Ha 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 ha! You guys said I wasn't going to get a password. Look at that. Totally accidentally got that password, but still, I got it. <laughs> of course I could roleplay it all by myself. Alright, well, we've got Xander's password, so I think we should go and uh, find his data pad. The reinforced. Let me see here, where was it? No, 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 no. Where was his data pad? This is Scott's, so we don't want Scott's. <laughs> One man show? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, let's see here, where's the Alexander? Okay, so his password, which you th said I wasn't gonna get, the Xander 756. Oh. That's strange. The password should work. Maybe I need to look around for more clues. Really? Really? I did all that good work to get the password and it doesn't work? <laughs> Darn. Well, hi, Shan. Welcome to the live stream. Yeah, the problem is I don't do accents. And I don't really have a, a wide variety of. Uh, Voices, I don't think, but I have to, I could do personalities, just not voices. Yeah, you're laughing at that passcode not working, aren't you, Wardfire? Aren't you? That's not even fair. Let's have a look here. I I think we've got a log up here. Mission data, Alexander's password. Uh, oh, look at that. According to Pavel's data pad, Alex incremented his data pad code by one. Ah, see, I figured that out too. X, A, N, D, E, R, seven, five, seven. Booyah! I can totally do it. <laughs> oh, I'm not bragging. I, I'm just getting lucky. Big difference. <laughs> oh yeah, there's lots of text. That's kind of the nature of this. It's an adventure game. Yeah, that's right. Booyah. Alright, so we have our first Xenophon briefing. I am so tired. But at least this planet looks quite uneventful. Andrew told us to write our dailies and I welcome the task because frankly, what else is there to do? I feel strange tension amongst the crew, as if some unresolved conflict hangs in the air. But, I think it's just because we are all so tired and I've lost so many friends. Oh wow, check out his rank. Command Chief Master Sergeant. Hmm. Alright, so you guys gotta help me out here. Who... What else am I gonna find in here? What's... Oh, look at this. What a morning. There's something wrong with Pavel, but he won't share. Once again, I had to wake him up because he was screaming as if in extreme pain. He always tells me that it's just a bad dream, but I don't remember him ever having such dreams before the landing on Ambrosia. Something must have happened down there, but nobody will t ever talk about it. Not even about what happened to Necrosis Thantos. But maybe someone who always said he loved cats and hated people didn't get much team support in a bad situation. What? Say what? Pavel got issues. Yeah, totally. We're all getting sick. I keep throwing up today, and I can tell you I was not alone. Either we've eaten something bad, or there's something in the air. I was not able to do anything. Not that there's anything to do here anyway. Lee caught something much worse than the rest of us. Her hair has started to fall out in patches, and it is a terrible sight. I just hope she will recover soon. I'm not feeling well, but I'm trying to hide it as best as possible. He is dead. Have I cursed this last planet by saying that I'd rather die here than go back to Earth? My body is slowly giving up on me and I don't think I'll last much longer. Today I spent countless hours with Barth trying to restore communication with Juvia. It looks as if someone sabotaged the data channels. Is there a hidden traitor among us? We don't want to alarm the crew just now, but unless we fix our orbital communication, we are pretty much stuck here. 
What a horrible day. I got the same shit as Lee and my hair is not falling out like hell when I die as well. I was unable to do anything but sleep today. Wait a minute, how are these dates working? How can it be 2133, the 19th month and the 28th day? How does that work? Barth told me he changed the laboratory code. Hey, look at that, we got a new code. Writing this down with my trusty pen. Lab. 014563. Because they don't trust Cynthia. Why, Cynthia? She would never kill anyone. I don't have much energy left, but I'd like to tell those idiots how gentle she is. Anyways, there's nothing I can do. I feel like I'm not going to last much longer. Maybe this planet grants us a wish, and my wish was to die here. I can start counting the days of how long I'll survive. Alright, Master Sergeant. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. Like, where would I use that laboratory code? That's the only thing I'm not sure about. Uh, dormitory. Unless it's back here, maybe. Lab. Keypad. Zero, one, four, five, six, three. Yay! Access granted! Okay, let's see. We've got some other crazy things. Here's another data pad. This one's for Barth. And we have another data pad. Wait a minute. There is a custom nano SD card inserted. Let's remove and analyze it before we try to use it. Who knows what might be stored there? Good question. Cynthia Cleveland's data pad. I want to hack into all these. I don't want to have to know all their passwords. Uh, scrap pad. Those simple digital scrap pads are used to write notes. Hmm. What is this device? Observation. It looks like a makeshift device. It was probably constructed from other devices. Can you be more specific? It looks like a Geiger counter. The parts came from the demolished hovercraft we saw outside. That's pretty ingenious. Commentary. Why would they need to measure radiation when the central computer was equipped with sophisticated radiation detectors? Even my sensors detected radiation right away. Perhaps they broke. Hmm. This container holds various research samples. Okay. The glove box was meant for handling unsafe materials. It was never used. Never? Why would you never use it? Whoa, we get to analyze something. Drag items there. Start the analysis. Okay, look at that. We've got a bunch of stuff. Oh, wait, over here. Form analysis. Now I feel like I'm doing CSI. <laughs> what is this? The sample contains traces of dried human blood. After six years of laying outside the hermetically sealed station, this blood is too degraded to analyze. Oh. Splatter vector analysis suggests that the blood came from an outside source and not from the person wearing the cl cloth. Okay, how about the body sample? <laughs> CSI Cyborg? Yeah, for sure. I actually haven't seen... Isn't that a new show? I don't even know if it's out yet. CSI Cyber? Okay, what do we got here? The skull is badly fractured. Cause of death? Laser gunshot to the head. Heavily mutated human viri, viri are present in the body, probably caused by the long exposure to high radiation levels. A DNA data comparison identification reveals a much oh a match with Andrew Lark. Oh, that's Andrew Lark. That was Andrew Lark's body, was it? Yeah, pew pew. We got some more analysis. The sample analysis reveals his skull was fractured by a strong blast. Suggested cause of death is a laser gunshot to the head from point blank range. The photographic analysis reveals an estimated 98.3% probability that he was shot while sleeping. A DNA data comparison to the 